Uh, next, we're a little bit of hope. We are flashback to hope. How about that? We're going to have a reading from, and I think we're going to ha have it put up on the screen also. And this is an excerpt from um, the second Bill of Rights, State of the Union speech by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And it's going to be read by Madison Tang um, with the Code Pink Peace Collective. It is our duty now to begin to lay the plans and determine the strategy for the winning of a lasting peace and the establishment of an American standard of living higher than ever before known. We cannot be content, no matter how high that general standard of living may be, if some fraction of our people, whether it be one third or one fifth or one tenth, is ill-fed, ill-clothed, ill-housed and insecure. This Republic had its beginning and grew to its present strength under the protection of certain inalienable political rights, among them the right of free speech, free press, free worship, trial by jury, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures. The, they were our rights to life and liberty. As our nation has grown in size and stature, however, as our industrial economy expanded, these political rights proved inadequate to assure us equality in the pursuit of happiness. We have come to a clear realization of the fact that true individual freedom cannot exist without economic security and independence. Necessitous men are not free men. People who are hungry and out of a job are the stuff of which dictatorships are made. In our day, these economic truths have become accepted as self-evident. We have accepted, so to speak, a second bill of rights under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all, regardless of station, race, or creed. Among these are the right to a useful and remunerative, and remunerative job in the industries or shops or farms or mines of the nation, the right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing and recreation, the right of every farmer to raise and sell his products as a return at a return which will give him and his family a decent living, the right of every businessman, large and small, to trade in an atmosphere of freedom from unfair competition and domination by monopolies at home or abroad the right of every family to a decent home, the right to adequate medical care and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health, the right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age, sickness, accident, and unemployment, and the right to a good education. All of these rights spell security, and after this war is won, we must be prepared to move forward in the implementation of these rights to new goals of human happiness and well-being. America's own rightful place in the world depends in large part upon how fully these and similar rights have been carried into practice for all of our citizens. For unless there is security here at home, there cannot be lasting peace in the world. Thank you, Madison. We read that at the first Cold War Truth Commission also. It was December of 2017 and uh, you know who was in the air, but also Bernie Sanders was very much in the air. And we basically made the point that how is it possible that in 1944, those words, those sentiments, those policies were almost law of the land. And yet here we were in 2017 or 2020, 2021, and we're so far from that. And Bernie Sanders couldn't even be our candidate. What happened in that interim? to the American psychology, the, the, the American body politic. And our argument is that the Cold War happened to this country. 